Alice Through the Looking Glass, the sequel everyone wanted because everyone loved Alice in Wonderland, directed by Tim Burton. Actually, no, it was very polarizing. Critics and audiences both pretty much felt the same way for once. And it was fine, I guess, as Johnny Depp is face paint. But the one thing that's undeniable about Alice in Wonderland that came out in 2010 is that it made a crap ton of money. It made over $1 billion worldwide. That's a lot of money. I'm actually surprised it took six years to make this movie with a gross like that. It seems like by now, there'd be a movie every single year for Alice in Wonderland with spin-off sequels involving the Cheshire Cat. Nevertheless, this movie is once again about Alice. She goes through a mirror back to Wonderland and learns that the Mad Hatter is very sad because he remembered suddenly that he had a family once and they died, I guess and that really makes him sad. So to make the Mad Hatter happy again, she goes back in time using the chronosphere, which belongs to Time himself, played by Sasha Baron Cohen, while at the same time realizing who she is in the real world while trying to maintain her career as a sea boat captain in the actual world. I mean, so many plots, and this movie just couldn't balance it. I wanted to go into this film and be swept away into a world where wonderment exists, where awe is something so important, and where one man's happiness creates an entire death trap that could literally collapse the entire world. I wanted to accept that, but the movie just had such a hard time balancing all of the stories and really justifying the sequel's existence. As I already said, the first film wasn't really that well received. It just made a lot of money. Tim Burton didn't even return to direct this movie. It's directed by James Bobin, who directed the most recent Muppets movie. The first one I thought being very good. Most recent, most wanted, not so much. With this film, there isn't much style or flair to the direction. It's very flat. Everything looks as if it's shot on a green screen room, and a lot of the CG animation looks like animation. It feels as if some real people are walking around fake artificial environments, and every once in a while, there might be a handrail or a door for them to knock on, or something that's actually tangible in existence that they can interact with while going like this at a ton of CGI elements. And that can sometimes work in a movie really well, but it just doesn't work here. As I said, this director previously worked on the Muppet movies in which humans interacted with things that weren't real, but they were real things, puppets. Kermit, Miss Piggy, these are things that people can look at and have an emotional attachment to. In this film, he's made another film in which actors are interacting with artificial things, but there's nothing there for them to really interact with. And that really shows in this film. This is the perfect example of how important it is to have a filmmaker who understands how to communicate the needed emotions for an actor to convey in a scene to make it all feel real and cohesive. Now, I'm not gonna trash the director of this movie because why would I do that? He made a film and films are really hard hard to make, but it is definitely something I noticed as I watched this movie, that there just wasn't that real emotion that felt as if it was consistent throughout each scene interacting with these fake elements. Also at this point, do we really need to know how everyone became who they are in a movie that was successful? Does there always have to be a prequel to tell its story? Do we have to know why the Mad Hatter went mad? No. Do we have to know why the evil queen is just so damn evil? No. Do we have to know what Darth Vader did when he was a kid? No, we don't. Sorry, that's another review. The movie has a good message overall. The importance of family. The importance of being yourself. The importance of not accepting what the world tells you you should be and making your own path. These are all good messages. It's just that the movie surrounding it has such a hard time honing it into a cohesive story and it becomes a mess of CGI, bad acting combined with that CGI, and a total cluster bomb of stories that just don't mix. I'm gonna give Alice Through the Looking Glass a D plus. So guys, I can't even tell you how many times over the past seven years I've been asked, where do you get all that stuff in your background? Where do you get these cool items? I'm gonna start telling you every once in a while. Starting with this guy right here. That is Wolverine from the film, The Wolverine. And oh my gosh, it is beautiful. It's a hot toy. I have wanted a hot toy for a very long time made by Sideshow Collectibles. And I bought that at Big Bad Toy Store, which is in my opinion, the best online toy store flat out. The amount of things they have at that store is mind-boggling. A ton of the Ben Presto Dragon Ball Z items that I own are available at the Big Bad Toy Store, and that's why I love that store. I like supporting businesses that I genuinely love and use myself, 
and these guys are worth it. I really, really suggest checking out that store. I have a special link in the description below. You guys can go and look at all of the products they have because they have extremely competitive prices. And I love that store, and my gosh, that, that Logan, you can take that tank top off. I know what I'm doing tonight. <clears throat> you guys are the best. Thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized. <laughs>